What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Talking Time Pieces with Tony. I'm Tony, doing a third video for the week because I had two videos that were Q&As and I don't usually do two Q&A videos. I do one Q&A video and one regular video. And in this video, well, first and foremost, today I am wearing my Cartier Pasha 41 millimeter blue dial. This watch is so sick. The great watch market crash of 2024. Oh my God. Let's roll the intro and we'll talk about it. Talking time pieces with Tony. Talking time pieces with Tony. All right. First and foremost, the watch market has not crashed. It hasn't tanked. It's not unbelievable. For some of you who watch that fucking godforsaken channel, I've watched a few of that guy's videos. It's, I mean, really? I don't understand why people, what? <laughs> Whatever, man, to each their own, fair enough. Um, and I'm just gonna sort of just explain something you know basically the thing is the type of people that think there are a watch market crash Rolex and otherwise are people that are very new to the watch industry got into the watch industry when the market was skyrocketed and and just word got around about it you know Rolex and and all these the brands that were just fucking going sky high that's an anomaly this is something that really doesn't happen. You'll occasionally obviously get a watch that that does sell for a shit ton of money like the Paul Newman Daytona. I mean, that's what started a lot of of the Daytona prices, but having at the at the at the most part, you know, watches we're not selling double and triple over retail, especially like a new Rolex, you know what I mean? You can't you, you know, let me just go back to let me just chill for a second because it's almost feel like I'm going to get into a rant because this stuff is just absolutely, you know, what's unbelievable about it is the fact that you believe the watch market crashed, okay? Keep in mind, the, the prices of watches, and let's just go to 2018, all right? That's, that's when I, I got my first Rolex at Bindi. Not my first Rolex, but my first new Rolex at Bindi. That's not all that long ago, right? It's 2018, right? You, you could walk into Rolex and they had tons of watches you could buy right then and there and with a discount. I bought a date just 36, very similar to, almost identical to this one with a white dial, Roman numerals, at, uh, and I got a 10% discount on it, okay? Granted, they didn't have Submariners for sale, but you, you, you didn't have to wait long at all. You didn't, there was no Daytonas, of course. Um, they had yacht masters, they had sky dwellers, they had Milgauss, they had OPs, all the date just you could want. Okay. And again, you could get these watches at a discount. And this again is like 2018. Okay. Prior to 2018. Okay. So we're going back watches in general. You know, people would buy a watch and they would wear it. And if they sold it, they would usually take a loss on it and they'd get rid of it and sell it to someone. There wasn't all this gray market shit that's going on now. You know what I mean? Not everyone had a YouTube channel back then, you know? I mean, in 2018, I had a YouTube channel. I started my YouTube channel January of 2017. You know, this is before any hype and what you could or couldn't get. You know, you just, if you wanted a watch, you'd get it. And if you didn't want it, you sold it you know, wouldn't make any money on it. But that was, that's just the watch. That's just, that's just pre-owned. That's just the, the way that it is. That's, that was the norm. Okay. Then all of a sudden we get to COVID, you know, we all know what happened. The watch market just went fucking through the roof. God knows why really, you know, people had too much money and a lot of time on their hands. And all of a sudden this whole thing kind of rolled in and now everything became hype, 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 you know, watches selling triple quadruple over retail you know what i mean like even a date just double over retail for a new date just then all of a sudden the flippers came out and everything came out now life kind of got back to where it is right and the watches have now the market's corrected 
you know, period go down, down, down. So watches that were once way up here are now about down here. But if the market really did crash, okay, then you'd be able to walk into a Pete or uh, Patek Philippe and just pick whatever watch you want and buy it. If the market crashed, if there was really a crash, you'd be able to get any watch you want at retail, you know, Rolex, Daytona, whatever you want. Okay, so the market hasn't crashed. You still got, you know, your uh, GMT Master line still up at, you know, say take the Batgirl for instance, still at between seventeen, nineteen thousand dollars. You'll see them on Chrono Twenty Four, high sixteens, depending on what year it is. Pepsi, the same thing, even higher. Um, you know, the, some of the AP still selling double over retail. Some of the Patek Philippe selling double, triple over retail. Some of them are under retail. Just like Rolex, you know, Rolex Datejust aren't selling double over retail anymore. You, some of them are, depending on if, it, if it's the motif dial in green or if it's the Wimbledon, it might be just above retail on the secondary. And then some, some of them are at, like say, take the Explorer, it could be at or just below retail, but just a little bit, not by much, you know. There's no crash. The watch market is still very healthy, okay. So, I mean, I had a viewer that told me, um, it was one, he was, I don't know, I can't remember the whole thing was going back and forth. He was, he was trying to prove me wrong on something. And uh, he said, well, if, if the watch market hasn't crashed, you can go into any AD and buy any brand other than Rolex and get a discount on them. You are correct, but I was getting discounts on watches when the watch market was stricken through the roof. Cartier never really went above retail. Or they, some of them stayed at the Santos and were still always below retail. I got my, and there was no shortage of them, you know? I, I got discounts on all of my watches I bought during that time where everything was sky high, you know? Everything was skyrocketed, right? The only watches I didn't get discounts on were Rolex and Tudor. You know, everything else I got a discount on. So it's always been that way. There's no crash. So a lot of people that talk about this, one, probably never bought any other watches at an AD, so they don't know. They just think everything was a fucking above retail. And then, I don't know, you just, people jump on this, this watch bandwagon like they, they know everything about the watch industry when they really don't, and you're not paying attention to the prices. I don't pay attention to the secondary market prices, you know, I mean, it's just, it's what it is. I know that some watches are still very high. The watch market has not crashed. The watch market is not dead, you know? It's like, Granted, you can, it might be easier now to get your date just, it might be easier now to get your Submariner, your Yacht Master or whatever else than it was in those times, okay? But you still are gonna have a hard time walking into an AD saying, uh, I want a, a green OP or a, a turquoise blue OP or whatever. You're just not gonna walk in by and, and walk out with it. It could happen depending on the AD, but not likely, you know? So. You know, and, so, and then also with the, uh, you know, the, the, everyone's saying Rolex is playing games. Rolex is playing games. No, Rolex isn't playing any games. If they were, you know, they're there. Rolex aren't in the business of playing games. They're there to sell watches. That's that's pure and simple. Some of the ADs might be play, playing games. Some of the ADs might have a stock load of watches in the back that they won't sell immediately. You know, they're tr they're trying to keep the exclusivity up, you know, and a little bit be, be a little bit more picky and choosy with their clientele. That's about it, you know. But walk into an AP dealer and see if you can get an AP. Walk into FP Jour and see if you can get an FP Jour. Walk into Vacheron and see if you can get a 222. You know, you might be able to get a patrimony the same day. Fair enough, man. Your easiest bet on Patek Philippe is the Calatrava, you know, or the Ellipse. Walk into Patek and see if you can walk out with one of those. You know what I mean? Now, the watch market's not dead. The watch market hasn't crashed, okay? Again, if it has crashed, and we'll know about it, and it'll be a whole, something major would have to have happened for that watch market to crash, where people, no one would give a shit about watches, they would be giving those things away, and I say giving them away, you know, I'm just using the term loosely, but at the same time, really, it's like, I, I see some of these videos, and I just, I, I understand, I don't, I don't understand how they have so many freaking viewers, you know, I mean, I guess it's building, I don't know, some people just want to build their channel, and, and, and feed you a bunch of bullshit, you know what I mean? It's like uh, I'd mentioned on the Q&A, no one has any insight on Rolex, except for Rolex. 
You know, what was a guy, a disgruntled Rolex employee, walk to the bar and talk to someone at the bar and say, guess what? Rolex are discontinuing this or doing this or doing this. There's a guy who has a channel, Scottsdale, whatever his thing is. It's not, it's not the Oliver Time or whatever they're called, Oliver Smith or whatever they are. It's not them. It's another guy. It's a, a single guy that has his channel. He's like, yeah, I've got some insight. They're going to discontinue all the motif dial Rolex and I've got good insight. No, you, and people believe that, you know? It, it. So again, this is just a quick, it's more, this is a rant. The watch market has not crashed. And besides, what the, what, what, if, it's, if the market's going down, that's great for buyers, not sellers, but buyers. You know what I mean? The people that are pissed off about it are the people that own these watches. They're going, oh my God, my, my GMT isn't worth $25,000 anymore. What am I gonna do? I bought this as an investment. It's been sitting in my safe. Well, that's your fault, dude. You know, you don't stick a watch in a safe and not wear it. I mean, you can, and I have too, but it's like, but not for that purpose of the investment aspect of it. You know, I buy watches because I love them. You know, I, it's like simple as that. I love them. If I wear them, I wear them. If I don't, it's not for any like keeping it protected, you know, because it's going to increase in value. You know, it's, uh, it's just not that again. The market is where it should be right now, right? And it hasn't tanked. And even if the market goes down even more, it's, it's not tanked, okay? So I guess on that note, I'll just, I'll let it go. I, you know, it was a bit of a rant, but I appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, well, we'll see you on the next one, huh?